God is visible in the person of Jesus. No wonder Jesus will say, He that has seen me has seen the Father. Hallelujah. John 1 29. Behold, the Lamb of God, not the Lamb for God. He's not the Lamb for God. He's the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, not the Lamb for God. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That's why in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. And one of the elders said unto him, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. This elder is not well taught. This elder calls Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion is a negative word. Jesus is not the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is what an elder said. This is what one of the elders said. He called him the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. This guy is a Jew from all indications. This elder is a Jewish man because look at his Jewish people that speak like that. But Jesus is not a lion. Lion and a lamb seated on the throne. It's not a lion. A lion is a negative word. Second Timothy 4.17 Look at the way the Bible describes lion here. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. A lion is something you run away from. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Hebrews 11.33 Top the mouth of lions. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Nothing positive about a lion. Revelation 4, 7. And the first beast was a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Nothing positive about a lion. Even Revelation 9, 8. Revelation 9, 17. Revelation 10.3 and Revelation 13.2 Always, lion in the Bible is used to describe an enemy. So that elder who called Jesus lion, he used that word ignorantly. In the book of Revelation, the consistency in describing Jesus is a lamb. 29 times in Revelation. Jesus is called a lamb. Only one time he's called a lion by that elder. So that elder was ignorant. Jesus is not a lion. Jesus is a lamb. That's why I read all the other references for you to see the usage of the word lion in the epistles. is for negative things. He was worshipping God ignorantly, second guessing. He was worshipping God based on rumor. He was worshipping God based on superstition. He did not have a first hand understanding of God. And somebody said, but this man was speaking from a vision. Yeah, haven't you seen people that had vision that didn't understand what the vision was? Was Peter not in a vision when he saw four-footed animals and God said, eat, he said, it's unclean, I cannot eat it. That you are ignorant doesn't mean in a vision you will have knowledge. The ignorance you have here, even in a vision, it will show. That's why when people say they died and went to heaven and came back and saw God in, I know they are suffering from malaria at its highest level. You went to heaven, all you saw is water garden. Why don't you go to plaza? You didn't go anywhere. The only people that have gone to heaven from the Bible, when they came back, they couldn't talk. There's nothing... How can you, where do you start explaining? The glories of heaven are beyond English language. They are beyond any language mortal man can speak. That's why God gave us tongues. Because there are times you want to enter some realms of communication, English fails. When English fails, you switch to tongues. So if here to even communicate with God, English fails you. Is it when you get to heaven or when you see into the glories of heaven that you have English to even be explaining it in a book? Chapter 1, 
what I saw, chapter 2, what I did, chapter 3, what he said to me, chapter 4, how I came back. <laughs> well done. Clap for yourself. <laughs> that you're in a vision doesn't mean everything is perfect. That's why even a vision has to be interpreted in the light of Christ. There was another guy that was in a vision but couldn't even understand what he was seeing. Ananias. Ananias in the Bible. So vision doesn't mean it is authentic. That an elder called Jesus a lion doesn't mean it is correct. We have to look at it doctrinally. A vision is not for doctrine. That's why visions are subjected to doctrine. And if they don't fit into doctrine, we throw them away. So Jesus is a lamb. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So God's character is the character of a lamb, not a lion. Revelation 6, 16 calls it the wrath of the lamb. The wrath of the lamb. What is the wrath of the lamb? It's a figure of speech. It means the sacrifice of the lamb. The sacrifice. The death of the lamb. The sacrifice of Christ is called the wrath of the lamb. God is revealed in Christ. And Christ is a lamb. Meaning God is a lamb. Again, is Jesus God? Is Jesus God? Does Jesus explain God to us? So, how does Jesus explain God's character to us? A lamb. Paul says, the weakness of God, he calls it the weakness of God. Because it's actually weakness. It's actually weakness. How can you say you are God and the only way you will save people is by you becoming a man and dying the death of a man to save people? That is weakness. That is weakness. God is a lamb. Lions are destructive. If God was a lion, he won't come down and die. He would destroy everything. The weakness of God is stronger than men. The foolishness of God, it is foolish. It is foolish that God wants to save you. The only way to save you is to come down and be like you and take your offense and suffer for your offense. To save you. That's weakness. That's God's character. He's a lamb. He's a lamb. He's not a lion. Thank you Lord. He's a lamb. He's not a lion. Hallelujah. All religions on earth. They boast of a destructive God. All of them. Except Christianity. We boast of a God of love. We boast of a God of love. We boast of a God who loves man. We boast of a God who out of his love for man became a man to die on behalf of man. We boast of a God who walked the face of the earth and was messed around by men and yet said nothing. We boast of a God who controls the whole world yet accepted to stay in the womb of a fragile girl called Mary. And he stayed there for nine months. And went through what Mary went through with her. Maybe she even had malaria. If there was malaria in her time. Maybe she even had fever. Maybe she even ran temperature. But she was still in that womb. Maybe she even went through all the different hormonal conditions that a pregnant woman goes through. Of course she has to go through. Because it's normal pregnancy. And yet... He was humble in that womb. That's the God we serve. He's a lamb. His character is that of a lamb. Walk the face of this earth. People slapped him. He didn't paralyze their hand. Oh, you don't know? They slapped God. People slapped God. Who is Jesus? Exactly. Did they slap Jesus? They slapped God. He didn't slap back. If it was you, you would have demonstrated some muscle, you know. As the hand is going up, you will make the hand to keep going. The hand will just keep going. You will tell the person, what are you trying to do? The hand will keep going. It will go till it will go round. It will come again. You will tell him, stay there for three weeks. Let people know 
that you attempted God. But he walked the face of the earth. They slapped him. He said nothing. Bible said they reviled him, but he reviled not. That's your God. That's the God you serve. That's your father. Hallelujah. That's the character of God. In First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in your spirit. Seen of angels for the first time. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. Great is the mystery. Whose being. That's a Greek word. Who's being? Great is the mystery. God is manifest. Another opposite. You can't say mystery and say manifest. <laughs> Two op another opposite. Great is the mystery. So meaning when he manifested, it's no more a mystery. So the manifestation of Christ demystifies God. The manifestation of Christ demystifies God. So to know God, you look into Christ. When you see into Christ, you see God. To know God, I know Christ. Outside Christ, there's no other place to know God. The Old Testament people kept singing, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, because they had no other way of imagining how to know God. So they had to be looking for God in stars and thunders. But today, we know God in Christ. Hallelujah. God became flesh, mystery demystified. So assumptions, away. Superstition, Go. We see God where? In Christ. <laughs> we see God in Christ. People like Elijah. You know some of you. Elijah used to be your hero. And there are some people Elijah is still their hero. But Elijah didn't even know God. Elijah's knowledge of God was very myopic. Very very myopic. No wonder he was busy calling fire down to clear people out. He knew God in superstitious realm. He really didn't know God. You know, one time Elijah was looking for God. He said the thunder blasted. And he thought God was there. When he went, God was not in the thunder. There was, even Elijah didn't know God. It was trial and error. It was trial and error. Then after a while he said, while I was still looking for God, in a still small voice. So that means he was not sure. And if God didn't continue manifesting things, he would have said that thunder was God. Are you understanding? Meaning he doesn't know God. How many of you remember in the book of John, certain Greeks came and they said, we will see Jesus. Then thunder blasted. Then they said, it thundered. That thunder was not thunder. It was God speaking audibly. But because they don't know God, they concluded that God's voice is thunder. When you don't know God, when you hear God's voice, you will say it's earthquake. Because in your mind, when God speaks, the whole earth should tremble. Because you're thinking of a lion. But he's a lamb. And look at Elijah with superstition. He now said to God, I am the only one left. No other person. God says, shut your mouth. Even in your village, there are 7,000 that have not bowed to bow. How can you be the only one? How can you be the only one? Shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Look at First Kings chapter 19 verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I even, I only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Next verse. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. And he broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. All of those violent expressions. God was not in it. 
Then later on, God will reveal himself in a still small voice. Hallelujah. Your God is a lamb. Your God is a lamb. The only commentary on Elijah in the New Testament, the only time Elijah is quoted with all of his exploits is two times. Only two times somebody made reference to Elijah. Number one was uh, Paul and number two was James. James says, Elias was a man of like passion, but he prayed earnestly that it may not rain. The reference made of Elijah in the epistle is not fire coming down, it's even rain. And then of course, brother Paul in Romans, in just one verse, he just mentioned Elijah in passing. Praise God. We are the climax of this thing. We know God in Christ. Touch your neighbor and say, I know God in Christ. Touch your neighbor and say, Christ reveals God to me.